Hello everyone and welcome back to my studio. My name is Tom Brown and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this miniature deep fryer. So I've had this piece in my studio for a really long time and I've been wanting to use it to make a miniature deep fryer. And so I found a reference image that I liked, uh, but it's something that also resembled the deep fryers that I used in my time working in uh, commercial kitchens. You can see in this drawing depicted in the back of the structure is a chimney and in the front is the section where the frying is done. And I'm going to be building it out of this sheet of mild steel. The steel can be a bit tough to cut as I don't have a proper pair of shears in my studio, but I found that this pair of Olfa scissors works really nicely cutting all kinds of materials all the way from steel, copper, aluminum to leather, paper, and textile. Now you can see that I'm beginning the main shape of the body by bending this piece of steel just by hand. A lot of the work that I do in my studio, I, I just gauge it by eye. I work by feel, so I'm just bending this into a shape until it, uh, it looks good, feels good, and fits the shape of my metal cylinder. So here what I'm doing is beginning to form the back wall of the fryer by bending the edges of my mild steel so that I have a, a section of material that I can attach the back part onto. And just testing to make sure everything fits nicely. I like working with mild steel because it, uh, it bends really easily, but it is still uh, quite a strong material. So I can build something like this and I can uh, have it bend into a shape and it will hold that shape really well. And so now I'm planning the top section. So this section will be what holds the metal cylinder in from the back. Now this was probably the most challenging piece for me to make in this entire build because it incorporated a curved cut into it. And uh, the cut had to be fairly precise in order to fit my metal cylinder. And so you can see when I do, um, when I do start making that cut that I do it in segments. So uh, I cut little snips out of it, like I'm cutting pieces of a pie. And then I use my pliers to bend them and just uh, wiggle them until they detach. And in that way, you can actually cut quite a, a precise and accurate semicircle. So here you can see me wiggling them out. And the nice thing about this is that if you have the two sides of your cut precisely aligned on the line where you want them to, when you do flex it back and forth like that, it will break off pretty much right along the line that you want it. And you can see right there, it's a pretty nice fit. So here I'm just cleaning up the sharp edges and smoothing everything out.
perfect. And there you go, that piece is done. And you can see the back section of the deep fryer starting to take shape. Now I'm using my calipers to mark out the holes that I will use to rivet these two pieces together. Now this part, the fit is important because it needs to grip the cylinder quite tightly. I wouldn't want it slipping out of place while it's full of hot oil. Now the wire you see in my hands is a scavenged aluminum wire. I really like this material for making my miniature rivets because it's very soft material so it can be pinned on either side to uh, create a rivet. And if you're not familiar with how rivets work, basically it's a, a shaft of metal with one side that's, uh, that's larger that you stick through the hole and then you hammer the other side that comes through and peen the end out so that it expands and essentially um, clamps the metal together by having two expanded ends on a central thinner shaft and so that's what I'm doing now I'm just peening over the end of that piece of aluminum to seal and secure my rivet in place so the key to rivets is going slow and steady fastening metal that is, uh, is actually quite strong. This is much better for my purposes than uh, say welding or using small um, nuts and bolts because it can be made of such a, a simple and readily available material and provides with an excellent secure fastening point. So I've moved on to the back piece, which I will be making out of the, the same sheet of mild steel. And you'll notice that I drilled my holes for the placement of my rivets out before I cut the sheet. And this is so that I can have a better sense of exactly how much material I need uh, and how much excess material I need on the edges to fold over to create a, basically a seal point for those rivets.
So you can see this back piece starting to take shape nicely. And those holes that I pre-drilled coming in handy now as placement guides to drill the holes in the back. There we go, just test fitting it. Very nice. So one challenge of riveting is getting into those tight spots. The very top of the chimney there is a very small opening that in order to effectively um, peen a rivet up there, I need to get a very thin piece of material in to use as a backing. So I had to improvise using this, uh, using this piece of zebra wood here. Something thin enough to get up into the sides. And you can see it work nicely. Everything's fitting together, there's no wiggle room. This is a scavenged piece of tube. Uh, I'm not sure what it came from, but I'm gonna be using it to build a burner for the deep fryer. Something that will fit inside of the device and will create heat so that I can cook miniature food in it. I think that this material is made of steel, very thin gauge steel. Now I'm heating it with my torch, trying to get it to bend nicely. But it didn't really cooperate the way that I wanted it to. I think normally folding or bending something like this, uh, the best practice is to fill it with a bending medium, often sand. Now this material right here is a carbon wool. This is something that's used as backing in uh, soldering, often in plumbing. It doesn't burn, but it works nicely as a wick, a uh, non-burning wick. So I use it in a lot of the burners that I make to wick the fuel to the opening of the burner, but it won't melt, it won't burn, never needs to be replaced. It's literally just made of, of pure carbon. So in order for the burner to work, it needs to have access to oxygen. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is put a vent in the side so that air can flow nicely into the bottom of the mechanism. It's also a chance to make a, a nice looking design on the side of the object. And there we have it, that's day one of working on the miniature deep fryer. Join me next time to see the conclusion of this as I polish it up and uh, yeah, test it out. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>